Bob with Million Mile Garage. Here's our castle nut we left off with last week, and I'm going to show you how to double the life of the transmission on this black 2000 Mustang GT. Hit like and subscribe, and uh, let's get down to it. Oh, wait a minute. That's right. I'm going to have to pull the pan. Sorry. <laughs> probably already figured it out um, I'll go ahead and just kill the suspense we're going to take this castle nut and we're going to weld it to the inside of the oil pan on the transmission and when it's installed the teeth on it will allow you to fully drain the pan the problem with the aftermarket drain plugs where you drill the pan and then you have the gasket on the outside of the pan and this bolts up from the inside is you have this much space in the pan where the oil doesn't get drained. So if you have a shallow pan, like on a Turbo 350 on a Camaro, a 904 on a Duster, uh, these pans on these Mustangs are a little deeper. But nonetheless, you have a fair amount of oil that doesn't get drained out. For example, if I install one of these just uh, on the side of the drain pan on the Camaro, um, I can only get like maybe a quart of fluid out, which is not really doing you much good. The whole point of having the drain is to be able to get two or three quarts out, like maybe every other, every other oil change or every 15 or 20,000 miles. All the Japanese cars have them, and I've taken full advantage of that. Our Odyssey and our Maxima has had the fluid changed uh, about, or at least we've, we've bled three to four quarts out. I think it's almost three quarts on each one of the, the uh, I think both the Odyssey and the Maxima is three quarts. And we do that about every 15 or 20,000 miles. And uh, the Maxima has 173,000 and counting. I think the van has, uh, I think 155, close to 160 on it, and uh, never really had any transmission problems. So uh, anyway, getting back to the motor mite real quick. Uh, when the motor mite is installed in the pan, this becomes your drain plug. So you have this tiny little hole with an O-ring on it, and it seems like you have to replace the O-ring every time. Um, and you can't tighten them up real tight because you split the O-ring, and then they leak. Um, if you don't have welding skills, you could take this and use a castle nut to install it and just cross-drill the shank so that way you'll drain most of the fluid out. So you can have this on here. I can just get it off real quick. You can have this drilled. I didn't need that gasket. And you can put this on like this. They don't line up very well when you do it that way. There we go. So if you had this installed like that, then you could just come in and drill through in a couple of spots. You don't want to weaken it too much, but again, you know, this is, this is not going to have a lot of torque on it. And that would be a way to do it if you don't have welding skills or just don't want to weld it. That would be a better way to do it. But again, you're still going to have this spindly little drain that you have to deal with every time you do it. Probably, probably not the best setup. Um, and again, I'm very frugal, so I would rather buy the cheaper option of just getting the drain plug that comes with a little gasket right from the outside. Then you got your castle nut mounted from the inside and you thread into that. It's very simple. Ooh, that's some dirty fluid. Okay. I guess it doesn't look too bad. Ooh, that's not good whatever that is. I wonder what that part is laying on the bottom of the pan. That can't be good. Look at this. What the heck is that? <laughs> but the pan is really clean. Um, I'm so used to pulling a pan off a Turbo 350 with 50,000 miles on it, and they usually have a, you know, at least a tablespoon of you know metallic goo and uh, friction material and um, bearing material in the bottom of the pan. This pan is actually looks pretty good, but look, look how dark the oil is. You see that? That's not good. Uh, when we bought this car about five years ago, I bought this car for my daughter. She had just graduated from high school. This was her graduation present. And uh, she's only put about 20,000 miles on it in five years. Um, and the person I bought it from said that the fluid had been changed or the transmission had been flushed. And I was like, yeah, right. Um, and the fluid didn't really look that bad on the stick. Of course, you know, the stick is yellow, so it's kind of hard to gauge color. But I'm going to say this fluid probably was not changed. Um, 
if the kid did change it, he must have had the car a lot longer than we thought he did, because that's uh, that's some really dirty fluid. That's nasty. Um, they say these gaskets are reusable, but that gasket looks like the factory gasket. I don't think this pan's ever been off, um, although I am kind of curious why that was sitting in the bottom of the pan there. Here's the magnet. Oh, that's where all our goo is. See this magnet right here? This just sets on the pan, and look at this. That catches all of the crud, and all of that is from the clutch frictions and the bushings in the transmission. That's just metallic goo. That's why it sticks to the magnet. And while there's not a tablespoon there, um, that's really not that bad. And basically what it's trying to do is keep that from working its way into the ga into the filter and making its way into the valve body and, you know, causing problems there. So um, that's really not that bad. But maybe for this style of transmission, maybe it is. I don't know. But we're going to wipe the pan out, put a plug in. Spotless. With our uh, outline right here where the gasket's going to go, you want to make sure that you have a, uh, a flat mating surface. And this is where we're going to put the drain plug right here. So we got this right here. We know that's our center. And I'm just going to take this. It's a very precision. This is my precision centering tool. Easy, easy. Right there. That's where we're going to drill a pilot hole. There's our pilot hole. I'm a big fan of those. Um, I always start with the smallest drill bit I can to get the job done because they always want to walk around, especially on a sheet metal surface like that that's angled. So we'll uh, we'll chuck up the appropriate size drill bit uh, to make the hole big enough for this to fit through. And then we'll be ready to weld on our castle nut. All right, let's do it. Perfect. We're just undoing our C-clamps. I just very gently clamped this down so that the pan wouldn't walk away from me when I was trying to drill it. I just know from the pans I've drilled in the past, if this pan isn't sitting still, you're going to end up wrinkling the pan when you drill it, which is a real pain to straighten out afterwards. So there we go. There's some extra metal filings we can put in the pan before we put it back on. <laughs> so there's our hole through here. And you can see I have a little bit of... Um, raised portion here too, which I'm going to have to flat file off. Not a huge deal. I'm going to sand this down around here anyway. This pan is treated with something. I can't tell. It's some kind of cadmium plating. It's either galvanized or something um, so that it won't rust. And obviously when they plate something, it's, you know, both the inside and the out. That's what this is. You can just see where it's tarnished over the years. So uh, the weld's not going to stick real good to that stuff. So I'm going to have to go in and sand this down pretty good anyway. And then we'll be able to uh, fit our castle nut on there. Just kind of showing you the really rough grip paper, and I'm just going to polish this really good. So I've got a surface for that weld to bite to. Just cut right through that. All right, I'm just coming in and cleaning up this old castle nut really good. You have to get every bit of rust off where you're going to be doing any welding, because otherwise the the weld will just roll right off of the metal. It won't take a bite. So um, I'm also taking the file and just rounding the edges on the castle nut where I'm going to weld in between each window because I don't want a sharp point that I'm trying to weld onto. So I want a nice flat area for me to grab with the weld. And of course, you know, if I was really in a hurry, of course I'm also filing this whole area flat here. So I don't I don't want to have any rust anywhere really on this while I'm doing it. I just want it to take a bite anywhere I put it. So that's cleaning up really good. Anywhere I can't get in with the file, just kind of polish the edges a little bit. Everything needs to be really good and shiny. You don't want any any kind of even a hint of oxidation or dirt or anything on here before you hit this with the with the welder. And I pretty well got this one buttoned up. Okay, installing our bolt without the gasket on it for obvious reasons because it's going to get really hot. We're going to come in right here. 
We're going to stick our castle nut on just like that. Just like that. And the only bit of oil that's going to remain in this when you drain is just that little puddle that stays right in here. So we're going to come in and we're going to snug this down a little bit. We want, we want this castle nut fitting good and snug against the pan. And we're going to come in in just three or four spots and hit that with the welder. It's going to be a little tricky down here on the bottom, but I'm pretty sure I can pull it off. I just need one, two, three, and I'm good. Okay, we're doing a leak test. You can see where I got really good penetration in a couple of those spots, just making sure I didn't burn a hole in the pan. We use flux corded wire and the wire spool is about 10 years old. We were having a hard time getting the, the weld to work right. So uh, not the prettiest weld, but uh, that nut is definitely on there. It's not coming off. So we're not leaking. If water ain't leaking past it, we're good. We're just going to remove the bolts. You see a nice view in there. You can see how the castle nut, how nice that works. So it gives you a spot for everything to drain out. Now obviously I didn't want to put this bolt on the very bottom because this hangs a little low. So I put it in the spot where the replacement pan would have the drain plug. So there's a little bit of oil that's going to remain, but not much. And just going to give it the stress test. I know these aren't the prettiest welds. Um, my uh, welding helmet was not functioning too well either, so some of these welds I was kind of doing with my eyes closed. And then the, uh, the flux wire that we were using was actually a little rusty. I think it was about 10 years old. But anyway, you put the wrench on here, and I'm just going to just lean into it pretty good. It's flexing the pan. I'll bend the pan before I get this bolt off. That ain't going to come off. So for sure, tightening this up, we know, you can see I got really good penetration here. Real good there. And then here and here, so I feel pretty good that that, uh, that castle nut's never gonna come off on you while you're changing the oil. And of course you just snug it up real good and that's all you need. Mission accomplished. We are going to be installing a new Wix filter and pan gasket, and we're going to fill the transmission up with Valvoline Mercon 5. The new Wix filter is identical to the what looks like the factory filter. The little indentations are to clear the bolt heads on the valve body on the bottom of the transmission. That's what helps keep the filter secured. And the only thing that keeps it suspended from the transmission is the pressure from the uh, the rubber seal that goes around the opening for the filter and then the pan basically holds the filter up Also this shiny spot that you see right here in the right rear corner of the pan There's a plastic uh, tab that hangs down on the transmission that touches right there when you tighten it down And it does make the pan rock back and forth a little bit, but don't fret over that It must be normal for this. I've never had a pan off on one of these Mustang AODs before go it's snugly it's snugly in there and it uh, it's, it's uh, keeps it from rotating by being on the valve body bolts the only thing we have to do next is install the oil pan I'm old school um, I still take and put a little uh, tranny fluid on the uh, pan gasket before I install it um, these gaskets are going to soak up some tranny fluid anyway and uh, this will help every the pan will help the gasket slide into place as I tighten it, and it's not going to cause any sealing problems or anything. In fact, it will probably actually prevent sealing problems. At least it does on turbo 350 transmissions. Alright, a little careful coming in with the pan. 
Gonna try not to knock the gasket loose as I, I kind of have to duck it underneath the converter. And then I've got a some kind of bracket or something I gotta go under. You can just grab a couple of screws and get it started. Okay, got one started. Let's find one on the back. Make sure the holes are lined up. Sometimes the gasket will move in on you a little bit. You gotta, you gotta find the hole. No big deal. And I got one right here. There we go. They go kind of hard. All right. There we go. Okay. Got two of them started. All right. You got two started. The rest are going to go. All right. Life was good. Okay, we'll let the converter drain for a little bit, and this will save us having to put five quarts of clean fluid in with the dirty fluid. Um, and I think 2000 and 2001 Mustangs have the drain plug, at least the GTs anyway, have the drain plug on the converter. Uh, if you have a uh, 2002 and later, I don't think you have that if you have the, uh, the automatic transmission. And I'm, I'm thinking at least another probably four, four or five quarts will come out. Four anyway. And you can see how brown this stuff is. This is a smart thing to do. Just because it's it's probably never been changed. Um, judging by that little uh, uh, thing they call the lollipop in the pan. I actually had to go Google that. I didn't know what that plug was I found in the pan. And I guess they put that in the uh, top of the transmission where the dipstick tube goes. And at the factory, when they ran the dipstick tube in, they just push that plug down and out of the way, and it falls in the bottom of the pan. So I guess that's a leading indicator that at least the pan has never been off, which means the filter's never been changed. Pretty amazing, considering the filter, you know, has 150,000 miles on it. These look like 1 8 NPT dry threads. So we're going to install this without any tape or sealer. All right, we've added five quarts into the uh, pan of our transmission, and then we're just going to start it and run it for two or three seconds to suck the fluid out of the pan and pump fluid back into the converter, and then we'll dump another four or five quarts in. Then we'll take it off the jack stands and get it up to temperature, and then we'll do our final, final check. more in and then uh, we'll get her off the jack stands and uh, get her up the temp. Okay, four, eight, nine, ten, and maybe just under ten and a half. So uh, 
we put uh, exactly 10 quarts back into the car and we'll get it up to temp and see where the uh, dipstick uh, levels out at. We may have to probably add another half a quart or so. Okay, with it uh, idling, not quite at the temperature yet. It's just barely oil touching the bottom of the stick. But I'm gonna wait till it gets up to operating temperature. It was actually up to here with it off cold. It sucked that much of it down. So we'll probably have to take it out and drive it and get it warm. You see all the smoke coming off of here? There's an awful lot of fluid that gets on the exhaust system when you drop the pan. I think it's the wind's blowing it away now. But uh, don't fret if you got a bunch of smoke coming up. It'll burn off. You can see there's a little bit of smoke coming up here. When you drop the pan, you're going to get some fluid on the exhaust system, so it's going to smoke a little bit until it burns off. No worries. I'm going to go ahead and dump a little more in because there's none, there's none showing on the stick. We added about that much. Let's just see if we get a reading on the stick. Actually, no, we'll take this. Right here. See if we can get any reading on the stick. Right now it looks dry. There's the high mark. There's cold. We're kind of in between cold and hot. I see there. Oh, actually, no, there's still fluid running down the tube. We'll try that one more time. It looked like to me it was about up to here on the stick for cold. So that's at least safe enough to take it out and drive it. Yeah. That's about where it's falling on the stick. That's safe enough to drive it. Coming up on the high mark on the stick. So I'm saying if I probably added another pint, I'd probably be okay. So we'll, uh, we'll add just a little more. Where I'm at right there. Let's see if I add just probably that much, that'll probably get me there. It doesn't take much once they're that full. Cool. That's about how much we put in put in about a finger's width, maybe. Okay, summing things up 
for a, an attempt to double the life of a transmission on a car that's 20 years old. That might be uh, a bit optimistic, especially seeing as how that uh, it looked like it had never had the oil changed in the transmission before. But nonetheless, we, uh, we spent $4 on the drain plug. I already had the castle nut. Um, we spent $9 a quart on the tranny fluid. We used 10 and a half quarts. So basically 11 quarts. So there's $99 for the fluid at nine bucks a quart. We spent 26 on the filter. Uh, tallying it all up with tax, it was about $140. So farmers have a saying, they say oil is cheap. And what that means is it's a lot cheaper to change the fluids on a regular basis than it is to replace the equipment. So hopefully that applies here. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hit like and subscribe. Uh, next week, we're going to uh, show you one other thing on the Mustang. We're getting it ready to take about a 900-mile trip, and we're going to bring it back down to my daughter, who's in Florida. And the car's up here in Alabama right now. So um, if you guys have some good ideas of what can be done to this 20-year-old car before we take it down there, uh, already noticing that <laughs> it never had the tranny fluid change from the previous two owners, um, I'm guessing the spark plugs have never been changed. Um, and so we're going to have to really go through the car. We've already put mufflers on it if you watch the other video. So um, we've got kind of a laundry list of things we're coming up with. If you guys have any suggestions, uh, feel free to hit something in the flame box and let me know uh, what you would do to this car before driving it 800 miles and leaving it with somebody who's not mechanically inclined uh, and who may put another 80,000 miles on it when I'm not around to look after it. It'd be interesting to see what your guys' suggestions are. Again, thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe. Mm -hmm.